Right, and these graphs are, are graphs when uh, there is only one variable. And if you're given a graph where there's only one variable, first of all, can you decide if each of these is a function? And would y equals 3 be considered a function? You have the 50-50 chance of guessing correctly. Okay. So for sure, what would be the justification? Why would you think that, Rick? Okay, so for what is the input? So here now, if, if could we rewrite this in slope-intercept form? Can we write this as y equals mx plus b? Okay, so if we looked at the y equals mx plus b, all we have is the constant, right? We only have b. There's no x to this. So what would the m value, what would the slope have to be on this? in order for this term to completely disappear. Zero. So can you have a graph with a y-intercept of three and a slope of zero? Yes. Yeah. So if you looked at this, you have a y-intercept of one, two, three. The slope of zero means that there's no rise, zero rise, but there is positive or negative run. So here is the graph of y equals three. Okay. So you can sketch this. Again, both of these equations here you can sketch. When you're looking at this one, does this pass the vertical line test for a function? Yeah. yeah. So this one is a function. Again, it fits that, that form of a linear equation okay, or a linear function. Now, what about this one? X equals negative 2. Here, instead of being a horizontal line, this one's going to be vertical. So here's the graph for this. So you can plot the graph. Okay, but does this pass the vertical line test for a function? No, so this is not a function. And so it doesn't fit this special form. Okay, but if you, have, if you have an equation where x doesn't change, you're just going to have a vertical line. It's not a function. If you have an equation where y doesn't change, um, you do have a function. It's a horizontal line. Now, sometimes that's going to be displayed in this simple way. And it may also be displayed as an equation of a line between two points. So if I gave you something like this, okay, and I asked you to write the equation of a line that passes through these two points, okay, you should be able to do this mentally. You don't need a calculator. You don't need to write anything. You should just be able to look at it and give me the answer. Olivia, what would it be? Good. And so the equation for this line would be? Perfect. If you notice, and that should be the first thing you look for, if you're looking to write the equation of a line between two points, just really quickly check and see, are, are both the x's or both the y's the same? If they are, then just write your equation, y equals whatever or x equals whatever. But is it, I mean, I guess you haven't really covered quadratics yet, but in the future, could that also be a quadratic? Right, for, this is for linear equations. Yeah. But now, however, let's kind of go back to here. The y's are your outputs. And so quadratics are functions. And so if you're, if you're looking at an equation of like a circle, then yes. But if it's even any function, if you have the same, uh, the y here, uh, yeah, you just want to be really careful. But right now, yes, it, as far as the linear equations go, okay, you, it's restricted to that. Okay, same thing holds true if I gave you a set of points that look like this. Do either of these uh, values stay the same? Yeah. So all you have to do is determine which one does. It's the x's, and they're always equal to negative 3 in this case. And so I would, again, encourage you to look for that first. It might simplify uh, your problem if it happens to be one of that form.